This is the journey to one Africa. belongs to the people. The old politicians that you see occupying office are merely occupants of those offices to the extent that the population allows them to do that. But we must remember that the history of the world is like the history of the pendulum. Things swing from time to time, whether you look at uh, civilizations in Europe or America or Asia or Africa. There was a time when Europe had uh, these young kings who were absolute and then they grew old in office and uh, the Europeans rose against them. You remember the revolutions, the glorious bourgeois revolution, you remember the French revolution, you remember the Bolshevik revolution, which ushered in new people. And we remember the, some of the activities of the younger people, the activities of individuals in Europe, for example, the young Turks in the 1900s. You remember the student riots in, in France. So the history has demonstrated that young people normally seek power and obtain it. Whether they retain it is another debate. When you come to the continent of Africa, the entire struggle for independence was led by young people in their 30s and in their 20s. Then, of course, some of them did not want to leave office and remained in office and created this culture of octogenarians who don't want to remain, in you know, to leave office and spend most of their time uh, uh, indoctrinating young people and animating them through corruption and ethnicity in Latin America. Latin America, we saw the rise of young people. When you talk about people like Ernesto Che Guevara, you talk about Simon Bolivar, and you go to the Caribbean, you talk about people like uh, Fidel Castro. When Fidel Castro became the leader of uh, Cuba, he was a young man. And one can, in the United States of America, you saw the rise of people like John Fitzgerald Kennedy in the 1960s in political power. And even in the civil rights movement, people like Michael, Malcolm X, people like Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, and all these, they were young people. So it would be simplistic to say that power is with old people. Right now, as I speak to you, you go to the Scandinavian countries and look at the average age of those in leadership is in 30s. And that is also true across most of Europe, except for a sprinkling of octogenarians. Asia, of course, has slightly older leaders. Africa is the home of individuals, most of whom have simply refused to get out of office. And that is a tragedy. And that is because they have succeeded in persuading our young people to be preoccupied with things that are not useful. So they bribe them, they tell them about ethnicity, they tell them about religion. And because they have used the offices to acquire wealth, they entice these young people and they remain in office and abuse office. But the answer is, once the youth wake up, then the youth will begin to occupy public office. But we must warn ourselves, youth and of itself is not a qualification. We just don't want youth for youth's sake. We want young people who are patriotic, young people who are visionary, young people who are dedicated, young people who are honest. In the words of Kwame Nkrumah, we want young people in whom truth and justice reposes. In the words of Malimu Kambarage Nyerere, young people in whom we can have faith, young people who believe in their countries, young people who believe in humanity. And if we have such young people, we must then also educate the electorate, particularly in the continent of Africa. The electorate in Africa has been intoxicated with two things, perhaps three, ethnicity, religion, 
and corruption until the day we exercise those three ghosts we can go to elections every five year cycle and we'll keep on getting the wrong men and women in public office is it not said that by their fruits we shall judge them they may say they are good but their fruits are bitter you know old order does not die easily <laughs> but if you looked and talked to very many young people in 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 that part of the world the british there are a lot of people who are anti monarchy and they think that uh, uh, the united kingdom should move from away from that direction because the monarchy puts into place individuals whose only claim to fame is history and family of course it serves them well i'm not one who is just about to condemn their society if that is what their society thinks is good and you must also remember that the european monarchies have known revolution there was a time when there were absolute monarchs across europe and they were removed from sweden to to to, to what was then russia with with the death of the romanovs in the greek in greece and in all these other places so the absolute monarchs died and we now have constitutional monarchs who are merely symbols of national unity that is a compromise but the united kingdom that you are talking about you remember that there was uh, uh, oliver cromwell who tried to overthrow the monarchy and to eliminate it completely during what was then called the bourgeois the glorious revolution but those are things that will continue to happen and if a people choose that that is the way they want to govern themselves and it serves them well then you cannot begrudge them but the truth is many people see those uh, monarchies as uh, historical curiosities and uh, that is the value that they have and they are latter day celebrities no not at all i'm one who does not believe that you must not have a relationship with people who are old old is useful people who have had experience are useful you learn from their mistakes that is what experience is all about that we have made mistakes and therefore because i'm older i want you to avoid those mistakes but you must as an individual if you're in a position of leadership be mentally agile to know when you are being misled because the president of ukraine in my view was an actor and he acted as a president and many times when i listen to him he still thinks he's acting which is tragic because he is now acting but real people are dying real people are dying ukraine has become a theater in my view where nato is testing its weapons and immunizing him from listening to people who would guide him to stop that war If we stop listening if we stop listening to NATO and the Joe Bidens of this world let me tell you that war would end in a month but they are encouraging they are telling him go on we are going to supply you with F16s and drones and all these things so it is incumbent upon any person in position in a position of leadership to determine what kind of advice you receive and what kind of advice you implement and if you are not careful remember there is no free lunch these people are telling you to do the things that they want you to do because at the end they are looking for a particular result so one must be very careful you must always surround yourself with men and women who mean well for you and the country and it is lenin after the bolshevik revolution who used to say that you must listen very carefully to your enemies because sometimes they tell you the truth that you do not want to hear but need to hear sometimes you are surrounded by a coterie of people who pretend to be your friends but they are not they are friends of the office that you hold and the things and the doors that you can open for them that requires discernment that requires detachment that requires focus that requires selflessness that requires intellectual firepower and spiritual contentment easier said than done you know power it is said corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely 
But I remember the great Tanzanian president, Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, used to say that when you are called upon to serve, remember that you are not necessarily the best, but you've been given the honor and privilege of serving. That is why we call you honorable. That is why sometimes we even call you excellency, not because you are excellent yourself, but we expect you to do excellent things. If you surround yourself with the wrong people who will continue to worship you, very soon you get used to being worshipped, then you become a demigod and you become hostile to truth and you become attracted to flattery. The strength of character is very important and power does not change people. Power reveals who you truly are or truly are. I've interacted with individuals even across this continent, men and women who mean well and they serve well. I was telling a friend of mine who is a senior politician in Kenya that one of the greatest hallmarks of a servant leader is that when he or she receives a letter from a citizen, he or she acknowledges the letter. And I've dealt with many African heads of state and to their credit, quite a number of them, they will cause the letter to be acknowledged. In Kenya, which is my country, you write to leaders, they never respond. Never. Because there, there is arrogance which is tragic. So what must one do when one gets into public office? Humility must never abandon you. I've had the opportunity myself of serving in public spaces in this country on three different occasions. And in my view, I've never changed. I've always realized that power is temporal and that you only do your bit and leave. As William Shakespeare once said, all the world is but a stage. We have our comings and goings. If you remember that, you'll remember to always have humility as your shadow. Most African politicians, I'm very reluctant to use the word leaders when I make reference to most African politicians. They occupy positions of leadership, but they are not leaders, most of them. First of all, the intention with which they enter into leadership is the problem. They seek office because they love power and privilege and opportunity that it provides to them. They want to become wealthy. And the easiest and shortest avenue to wealth in Africa today is public office. With the minimum effort, you become a multimillionaire. They go there in order to be worshipped. And they go there not to do the right thing. And once they have been in office, they do so many wrong things that it becomes dangerous for them to leave office. So their continued occupation of office is also to ensure that they enjoy immunity that comes with office. But when you are a good leader who does the right thing, you do not fear to leave office because nothing has changed. And I've seen leaders of that ilk in, in, in this part of the continent. And there are quite a number of sprinkling of leaders who have left office and are doing great things. Joachim Chisano in Mozambique. If you can punya pohamba in Botswana, people like uh, uh, my good friend Jakaya uh, Mrisho Kikwete, Ali Hassan Mwinyi in Tanzania, Benjamin William Mkapa, Joachim Chisano, as I've said, of Mozambique. These are people who have left office and nothing is happening to them because they are men and women of integrity. John, John, uh, John Mahama of Ghana. There are quite a number of them now across the continent who do not fear being out of office and they are doing great things once they leave office. But there are others who will never leave office because the day they leave office holding all factors constant, they ought to be arrested. 
because they are thieves and murderers. These are the highest crimes known to man. How can they leave office? And we know them. Positive civic awareness and consciousness. If you look at the Kenyan politics today, and I've been around, I've seen, I've seen these politicians move from one political party to the other. I've seen them work together. I've seen them oppose each other. I've seen them contradict themselves, say one thing with one side of the mouth and deny it with the other side of the mouth. And as long as they are capable of manipulating the population along ethnic lines, they will always succeed. So how do we solve it? By civic awareness. Is it easy? It is not easy because these individuals have now amassed so much money in an environment where there is great poverty so that any man or woman with ideas is not attractive to the electorate. The person who is attractive to the electorate is the man or woman who has a lot of money. That is why essentially countries in Africa, including Kenya, there is a lot of kleptocrats, people who are thieves. I dare say that in the Republic of Kenya, as in most African countries, 99% of the politicians cannot account for more than one third of their wealth. And I've, I can tell you this as a fact, I know, and if I look at them, all of them, they will not contradict me because they know I know. And therefore, if we are going to change this country, voices of reason, voices of goodwill must become louder and louder. Is it going to be easy to change? It is not, because there's going to be a fight back. When somebody has now gotten into public office and is enjoying the highest quality of life because of public office, will they leave it? You now have politicians who are essentially part-timers, but they enjoy pension. They enjoy free cars. They enjoy mortgages. But they continue, if they are lawyers, they continue to practice law. If they are doctors, they continue. If they are architects, they continue. If they are businessmen, they continue. So that what does the political office give them? Access. Is it not contradictory that in most of Africa, including Kenya, the richest individuals are politicians? The biggest industry is politics today. If you want to get rich quickly, abandon all these other things going to politics. That is why it is a cutthroat competition in which throats are actually cut, literally cut. Arise, young people. Determine what it is that you want to ensure that you create countries where there is justice, peace, economic development and opportunities and use the power of the vote to elect good men and women and use means which will ensure that there is sustained growth. What we saw during the Arab Spring was a useful thing, but the youth then abandoned it so that it was hijacked by these political mandarins. The lesson to be learned from there is that before you engage in a revolution of any kind, you must always have a shadow cabinet, a shadow government. You must know who is going to occupy what, because if you don't, these mandarins who have been in government for too long, they know how to capture it. And you saw throughout the Arab world, whether it was in Tunisia or Egypt, it is the old ones who ended up being in positions of political leadership, once the young people have done the heavy lifting, then they told them you have no experience. When you want to serve people with a heart of gold, experience is honesty. In fact, the experience that they talk about is the experience that Africa does not want. But we must wake up. Young Africans must ensure that they are not divided along religion, they are not divided along ethnicity, and they must tell these thieves, we don't want your money. It is our money anyway. The day they do that and organize themselves, let me tell you, the youth have the vote. All these octogenarians who don't mean well for the country will be run out of office, but, the young people must always remember that the old people also have a role to play. But they must ask which old people. Within the ranks of the old, old or older people, they are good people. Within the ranks of the younger people, they are also terrible individuals. 
So it is a mix of ensuring that you have the right people. As they say in Igbo proverb, Igbo of Nigeria, when mother cow is chewing, baby cow watches. And it is that way that baby cow learns. Remember, I'm using the word baby rather than calf deliberately. <laughs>